Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep Live radio show So only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes if you're watching on YouTube Please subscribe. This this is kind of another attempt at an experiment. And I'm just going to stretch my legs out, but I want to make sure that Andre isn't directly under me. So... I decided to do a three hour live radio show based, you know, still on the premise of the let me bore you to sleep. Andre, sorry about that, it's Andre's. This time of the night, he gets very relaxed and, uh, you know, parts of him get more relaxed than others. So let me just have a look. Oh, I didn't put the sign up to not disturb me. Ah, That's all right. I shouldn't get anyone disturbed me at midnight. I hope. Yeah, and just as I... um, was preparing to start the recording my laptop froze which was a bit weird so I'm just gonna share just gonna share um okay live now so i'm just going to share share my share that this is live as well as making weird Noises in the process. That's it. And I was intending on doing this before I actually started the broadcast. But no, the laptop had to close down. Had to just stop working altogether. It's quite weird, I tell you. That's probably not something I should really share with you, but... um, As I got closer to the 12 o'clock mark, I really couldn't be bothered (laughs) to do this. And I know it's not the the most... um, positive thing to probably say. But I really just couldn't be asked. I was like, oh, I can't be bothered. I've got to just, what, just talk about nothing for three hours? What's the point in that? But we'll see, you know, just see how it goes. See how it goes. See what occurs. See, you know, see, see what happens. No point getting all excited about it, you know. Just, just do it. I think it's because I was tired early and I went and laid down, and then I was hungry. And by the time I actually ate, I was just not hungry anymore, and I didn't really have time to digest my food. Not that I needed to go swimming or anything, but you know, I know it's not, you know, 
Make sure you don't don't do a radio show on an empty stomach or on a full stomach or wait until you've eaten, you know, for 20 minutes before you start the radio show. I mean, I never saw any adverts like that when I was younger on television, but I was involved around swimming. So now this isn't working, Facebook. Promise you a miracle. Ah, ah, ooh, ah, ah. Pinky pong, pong, pinky pong. Ah, ah, ooh, ah, ah. Right, okay. Now I'm just going to share on Twitter and then that's done. Oh dear. Let's know landing. So I hope you're all okay today. Um, as I do this, if I do another one, it will be a bit more. Not quicker because I don't want it to be quicker because I'm not interested, but maybe a little bit, <laughs> I was gonna say dynamic, really? I don't think anybody would think of me and the word dynamic would not pop up. That's what I'm thinking. I'm not really, not really a bit of a dynamo, am I? I'm more of a, not a slug, but for me, it's kind of the, um, I, you know, crawl along slowly. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Oops, okay. So there we go. You can contact me on Twitter if you choose uh, whilst the show is on and it's just at Jason Newland. Um, so that's Jason, N-E-W-L-A-N-D. And that's not how you saw Jason. Jason is J-A-S-O-N. N-E-W-L-A-N-D is the new land part. Went to the chemist or pharmacy and again had to spell my name. New land. Oh, can you spell that for me, please? I practically have spelt it to you by saying new land. Can you spell new? What you mean like uh, old? Yeah, but new. What new? As in... Uh, like it's a new day and um, it's like it's a new a new parcel and uh, it's a newborn baby yeah new what N-E-W yeah can you spell land what you mean like oh I fell down on the ground but the ground is land you know that kind of uh, I bought a house and it had land with it is that, is, that, is that what you mean? Yeah, land. You mean like L-A-N-D? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I can. I can spell that. L-A-N-D. And you can spell new. Yeah, N-E-W. Or you can spell my name then, can't you? No, but when you break it up like that, I can't. If it's new, if it's Newland. If, it's, if you pronounce it Newland, then I can spell it. I can put out, you know, it's much easier for me, particularly. What do you mean it's, it's easier for you, particularly? I don't know. I was hoping there'd be more words after I said that, but there wasn't. It didn't happen. Oh, great. New land. It's not that difficult to spell. Hush, not that. And you say, well, why is it though so difficult for you to just pronounce it Newland? Why do you have to say Newland? I'm going to eat a Cadbury's cream egg, by the way. Because if I leave it too long, it will be warm and soggy. Just like my heart. <laughs> just like in between my toes. 
Ugh, 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 ugh. That's horrible. Mm. when you do go to my website you might think wait a minute I'm at jasonnewland.com the let me boy to sleep radio show it's right at the top of the page I can see it's moving along it's you know it's it's active it's live because it says live on it but I can hear nothing which is a bit weird, I understand, and I find it a bit weird, but you have to press the play button. You don't have to press it, you do what you want, but in order to get it to play, you have to press the play button. Okay. Right, visitors right now is one. And that's me. That's no good. Need to have someone listening, otherwise I won't want to do it. Oh look, what's this on you? I just found something. Oh, there's some karate going on. Oh wow. ages since I did any martial arts I used to do taekwondo until about five years ago I had to stop doing it because of my lower back a real just it was just causing me so much problems so I ended up having to stop and it was it was a shame actually because here's the thing right I go to a doctor and I say to the doctor in fact it's not just a doctor I said it to I said it to a doctor I said it to a psychiatrist I said it to a social worker care worker whatever who's doing a physical you know checking my bodily functions all of Every all of them except the ones I wanted her to check, and she's uh, all of them said the same thing. You know, yeah, yeah, you, you, you lower back. You won't have the problems if you exercise. You need to exercise more. So okay. So explain this then. Andre, blimey. I'm going to put him in his cage if he keeps doing that. He's lying on the floor. He's oblivious to what's coming out of his bum. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so I said, okay, so you're going and saying it's the exercise that I need to do. Uh, that's what I need to do, yeah? Exercise, so I won't have pain in my back. So how come I was going to do Taekwondo? I was doing that twice a week. And I was getting pain in my back. I had to stop doing that because of the pain in my back. I had to stop doing exercise because of the pain in my... It's like, uh, it's like yeah, but you need to do exercise. If you do exercise, then it's like, uh, I just have to repeat what I've been told and what I've heard previously. Just got to repeat it. 
and hopefully you'll go away and leave me alone and I can just repeat something else to the next person. Okay. So I started doing some exercise and it actually helped, actually helped my back. Um, <laughs> but a bit of, uh, it's not so much exercise, more strengthening with the uh, weights. So I've got some weights here and I I haven't used them for a few months. In fact, I don't think I've touched them for this year yet. Wow. I didn't realise Morecambe and Wise, Ernie Wise died 20 years ago. Wow. I loved Ernie Wise. The thing is, it's weird because he surely hasn't been dead that long. Whenever anyone died, anyone famous, Ernie Wise used to be the person that used to talk about them. That like would play, you know, the news programs would go to Ernie Wise and they'd say, yeah, he was a great performer and she was a great performer and. Uh, you know, whatever, and it's like, oh, it's very sad, and uh, I used to know them, we used to work together, um, you know, in the 30s or 40s or 50s or whenever it was, and it used to be like the running joke with me and my friends anyway, I used to say, well, who's going to come out when he's dead who's going to come out who are they going to sort of turn to when he dies to remember him because he's the one that comes out they wheeled him out for everybody you know and um, I don't remember who they wheeled out for him but he's, I, he was very very loved in England Ernie Wise Eric and Ernie See, when I was a kid, Eric and Ernie were, like, we're talking like early 80s, and they were probably in their 50s then, if not older. And they were like the biggest uh, comedy act in, in England probably more so late 70s and early 80s but they were still huge they had like the biggest audience on Christmas Day and stuff like that they were great that's it that's all I've got to say about that well that's that subject covered what's next oh wait a minute well according to this there are no visitors right now even though I'm actually on there so I think that just goes to show that it's not real is it it's not real at all it doesn't make sense to me if you are watching then please let me know so there's been two plays so there's two people watching at least if you are watching and please um, let me know uh, as I said on Twitter you can just stick my name in I am at what am I at Jason Newland on Twitter you can leave a comment you can go to my Facebook page which is uh, facebook.com forward slash Jason Newland Hypnosis and you can leave me a message on there just leave a message message click under oh I suppose you can do it if you're not me uh, what else could you do you could email me which is uh Jason Newland at hotmail.co.uk. I've just got a message from Linda. Hey, Linda. You're watching or listening? Watching? Listen. 
if you're watching, I'm worried, which means that there's a camera somewhere and I'm scared because I've got no camera facing me as far as I know. But we've got Linda, so that's really cool. Hi, Linda. Um, I think it's just uh, the stats don't, because I've got those two stats. I've got the the website stats, which says that there's nobody at all online right now, even though I am anyway. Uh, so I know there's, there's at least me and it's showing that there's nobody. So I'm not quite sure what that's about. And on the podcast, it's saying that I've got, I've had two, two plays, which again is, is a bit strange. It's like, oh, okay. But then what's weird is in a couple of hours time, it will show me that I've had a lot more, but it just hasn't logged it yet. So hi, Linda. Um, welcome to this live uh, Let Me Boy to Sleep radio show. So as I said, you can contact me on my email address, jasonnewland at hotmail.co.uk. You can send, you can contact me on my Facebook page, which is Jason Newland Hypnosis, or Twitter at Jason Newland. So there's the three different ways you can contact me and just say hi, you can leave a message and I can broadcast that message out to the world or to the other person listening, whichever comes first. And although this may only be a couple of us listening whilst it's live at this time, there will be hundreds of people listening to it afterwards if not more so people will listen it's just uh, they it's like I'm forcing it people will listen you must listen and it's about getting the time right it's quite difficult because some people are not necessarily gonna want to listen to this when they're awake or when they don't want to go to sleep some people will want to listen to it uh, for company. Uh, some people, so, you know, some people will wait until later and listen to it because that's when they're able to go to sleep or go to bed. So the timing is, it's difficult to get the timing right. I chose 12 to 3 because I'm generally up at this time. Although really I should be asleep. But I figure, if I'm up anyway, isn't it better to do something with my time and do something like this than be, you know, watching telly or kind of, do you know what I mean? Anyway, so Linda's, Linda Lidner, Linda Linda Lidner, that's Linda. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Linda Lidner. I'd have if I went onto Facebook. Well, I'm on Facebook, but if I went on and did a Facebook broadcast, I'd get loads of people instantly watching. But it's about growing something, isn't it? It's, it sounds weird. Like, uh, I'm not talking about converting my attic into some kind of uh, you know growing place where I grow things that are wrong and naughty but grow a girlfriend I suppose I could grow a girlfriend you know what I'm thinking I might actually oh I've got an idea I'm not going to say it out loud because then I sport it so let's have a look so what I'm going to do is, so you guys just said you can contact me. I'm just going to get my other thing. Bear with me two seconds. I'm going to get my tablet out. 
which I can write on. Oh yeah! It's all coming together now. I can feel it. I can feel it in me water. So what I need to do is turn it on, probably. I always struggle at turning things on. So if I get rid of the website, okay, so I'll close that down. Don't need to have that on. I don't need to have two of those. So the analytics is saying that so far today it is three, so it's midnight, we had three visitors. Uh, with no right, none right now. Show more. Oh, no. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of there because I don't need to be on there. I'm going to leave Twitter up. I'm going to come out of Spreaker. Don't need to be on there either. And I'm going to leave Facebook up and also have access to my email. Yeah. And then I can see what messages people sent me. And hopefully my tablet will turn itself on. You'll hear it go beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. Um, maybe not. I should have it on silent, but I don't know if it's on silent or not. It's, uh, I had a pizza. I still got a pizza. I had about, I don't know, less than half of it. But it was very messy. And I've got the tissue, you know, the towels, paper towel, tissue things, kitchen towels, on my table. I'm going to call it my desk. On my desk. And it looks like I've just... To help to give birth or something. It's really, yeah, I'll just chuck that in the bin. We need warm towels. Well, I have some kitchen roll here. That'll have to do. Right, okay, here we go. So, da 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 da. So I'm gonna, what are we gonna do this? What today, what is today? Uh, let me bore you. Da, da, da. Okay, right. I'm just waiting for some questions. If anybody's got any questions they want to know about me, then just ask. Right, so let's see if I've got any questions. I've got an email here. Right, oh, question. From Rob. Where is your hair? Okay, where is my hair? Well, it's on my head. I'm not quite sure what you mean by where is my hair. Uh, I'm guessing you're kind of referring to the, the fact that I have a tendency of shaving my head at certain times of the year, usually at silly times. I'll give you an example. I think it was 2007. 2007. And I just got yeah so i'd started at university doing my degree in counseling 
and I started that in probably what September so we got to December and my hair was a bit long it was a bit like what it is now a little bit out of control I don't mean going out at night causing trouble coming home late you know not locking the doors it just uh, what I mean it just it just kind of went in its own direction kind of went its own way which is annoying if anyone out there that has hair um, it's a little bit like eyebrow hairs you know you, I don't know if anyone else is has this but I've noticed as I got older I have these eyebrow hairs that just they're made of titanium they're just they're just made of completely different material and they have their own agenda and if you they just want to stand out it's like they've they've gone along with the pack all their lives and they've gone on some kind of uh, motivational course to help them to be uh, more assertive or something and they've decided yeah that's it I'm just going to be an ass, and that's kind of what these eyebrow hairs sort of are a little bit like. like I'm gonna stand out, and just, everyone's gonna see it. <laughs> it's like no, everyone's gonna think that you've your eyebrows have took Viagra. <laughs> no, I don't want that. And they're annoying. Anyway. Sometimes I feel like my whole hair is like that, just doing its own thing. And uh, so it's a little bit annoying. How do I manage you to get chocolate everywhere? Da 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 da. No, no other messages. So that's. So it was December 2007. I it was snowing outside I feel a little bit nostalgic towards this because it's probably because it was new I was starting on a kind of starting on a new journey well, I'd already started on it but you know I, I managed to get through the first term and was Probably feeling quite good about myself. Probably feeling uh, like I'd accomplished something. Uh, I'd stuck at it. And although there was a long way to go, it was Christmas coming up. You know, it was, it was fairly easy to kind of be relaxed. And it was snowing, which was really nice. But... Unfortunately, the snow led to a lack of transport to kind of get out, and I wasn't able. I'm making this as an excuse, but I wasn't able to get to have my hair cut. Although there was a hairdresser just around the corner, so that would make no logical sense. But then you wouldn't have known that if I hadn't told you about the hairdressers around the corner really need to just keep quiet sometimes why do I have to share everything I don't shouldn't need to share everything should I oh dear and anyway so in the place that I lived it was this not a bungalow um, kind of like had a thatched roof uh, cottage that's it it was a cottage and where I lived there was if you go in the front door you just go straight all the way down through the 
kitchen through another door. Yeah, through the kitchen, through another door, and then it would lead you to the bathroom. Uh, before you get to the bathroom, on the right hand side was my bedroom. There's only a small room. And this is tr totally true. I can't can't believe this actually, but I I didn't have an electric razor to trim my hair. So what I did is I used scissors and um, like nail scissors, like you know the little nail scissors. I used those to cut my hair and it took ages and ages and ages and by the time I finished it was Easter it took ages and then once I got it short enough I started using a wet razor you know like a one with plastic coating and did that with I think soap and water or I might have had foam I don't remember if I had shaving foam again it took a it was just like wow it was just and it wasn't even to save money I just got frustrated with the way my hair was looking I needed to do something And then, so I did this, and then the next day I had a cold. It was so cold because of all the snow and stuff. I just, it's, I should have kept my natural heating on. Because that's the natural heating, isn't it? We've got the central heating. We've got, uh, you know, like various different heating systems in our homes. But... Our hair is our natural heating. And you could say, well, perhaps we don't need to keep um, all of all of our natural heating because it's also covered up by other things. So maybe not all of the hair on our body needs to be there, you know now that we wear clothes and thongs and you know different things um, but on our head if you don't need to shave your head perhaps you don't maybe just leave the hair there I don't know I used to shave my head though for years and I still still did. Last time I I haven't actually had a haircut for I think the last time I paid for a haircut was about four years ago. Maybe less. But I generally just end up shaving it all off. And it feels nice when it's shaved, but I don't particularly look nice. It looks a bit, I don't know. I don't do it right to the bone anymore. I don't use the wet shaver. I just use an electric shaver, you know, which means I can kind of limit what length of shortness I choose to uh, exhibit to the world but at the same time if you let it get too long then it's hard to use any length other than the shortest length because the I don't know what they call but you know the plastic measurer thing that's on it that doesn't work if your hair is long your hair gets too long it doesn't work anymore and you just have to go to the metal and just shave the whole thing off 
We don't have to, but. You don't have to stop walking when you get to a wall, but it's a good idea, isn't it? So, let's see if I've got any messages on Facebook. Uh, message here, why is it live? Why am I, yeah, why Why am I doing it live? Why is it live? Okay. Um, just write that down so I can remember it. Is it live? Well, it depends which way you want to look at it. I mean, uh, if you want to look at it in an extra stenchal way, Extra stential, existential. Is I was talking to somebody earlier today who's a fan of what I do, and we were just chatting, and she said that. Well, I was talking about how somebody sent me a message saying that they in fact I'll read you the message give me two seconds this is a message that I received oh I've got another message coming through da, 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 da. someone's saying to me um, give me two seconds I'll read it to you just going to my other page, my other Facebook. It was, oh, where was it? An inbox? A message? I think it was a message I got. Oh no, it was on Twitter, it was on Twitter. Ah, oh, it was on Twitter. Okay, let me let me read you the. I've got a message on Twitter. Wow. Now I'm looking at Amelia Clark for some reason. Okay, let's have a look at notifications. Gillian on Twitter said to me, "I can't listen to your podcasts to fall asleep because they make me laugh too much." are too hard you are too funny to be boring so I was discussing this with another friend and she said she said well you are quite boring I said oh thanks she said yeah but you want to be don't you I said yes yes, yes. Uh, Lin Linda says did you get Andre, Andre a new harness lead no, I didn't, because I don't care about him anymore. <laughs> no, it was because I have reinforced it myself. And I just haven't got around to ordering it. But then I'm thinking, why am I going to reorder yet another harness and lead exactly the same as what he's had he's already got through three of them and I don't mind if they break that doesn't bother me because you know they cost I don't know maybe 20 quid or something so it's, it's not it's not that they break that I'm bothered about it's when they break that bugs me so the other night it broke as he was messing around with in some railings and he ended up the other side of the railing in the school and I had to try and get him oh excuse me a bit of gas it's nice lovely lovely uh, to listen to that isn't it Andre all his gas and then me doing my burps him and his farts and uh, but last year I think it was last year whenever the last lead broke 
he was on my shoulders when it broke and he was he, he, he fell off onto the floor and he was literally about to run into the road I'm talking a busy busy road and managed I managed to grab him just because it's, it's the lead is fine as long as all he does is walk but it's when he start because he, he he rolls around that's what he does that's that's his thing so he doesn't just walk on four legs and uh you know, he's rubbing himself against the wall, he's wrapping himself around things, he's rubbing in and out of holes. Um, so I'm gonna. I did actually get, I do have a harness that my friend gave me, but it was for small animals, but it's for small. It would be for a bigger animal than this. So you're looking probably at a really, really small dog. I'm not sure what kind of animal, or maybe a cat, perhaps. Cats are bigger, aren't they? So, and it was too big for Andre. So I, I had to, I've not got rid of it, but I just left it there. So what I did is I reinforced it myself using some sellotape and some, just a few, few bits and bobs. And it's very, very sturdy right now. Probably more sturdy than what it was before. And now I don't take him anywhere where he can get in trouble. So he's always... I won't take him on any main roads or anything until I get a new harness for him. But I'm just... Uh, I'm going to get a harness. I just need to sort of wait for a couple of weeks before I can pay pay for it. That's a nice shawl. Lovely. Yes. But he, he's he's happy enough. At least he... Because he was getting really grumpy with me because I wasn't taking him out. Because I said to him, you ain't going out no more. I was angry with him, but it wasn't really his fault. But I was angry because I felt like I nearly lost him. And... Uh, I was also, I was angry at myself because I wasn't able to jump over that fence. And the more I tell a story, the bigger the fence gets, I've noticed. So it's now about 17 foot tall in my latest stories about the fence. Um, I think even Donald Trump would be pleased with that. It's a big old wall, but in reality, it didn't go up to my chest at all. It was probably up to my belly button, because I was standing next to it today, and I was like, oh, I I didn't just exaggerate it to other people, I exaggerated it to myself, because if I was a bit embarrassed that I couldn't actually jump over something like that. That low, you know, that low. But to be fair, if it was just a standard flat surface, I probably could have got over it a lot easier. But this was like, um, like a school. Well, it was. It wasn't like it, it was a. It is a school fence, so it's curvy, and then flat, curvy. So it's, there's lots of gaps. So you can't. There's nowhere to sort of put your hands or anything sort of to to jump over. Um, so I was a little bit embarrassed about that and also in my mind I would do absolutely anything to protect Andre and to make sure he's safe I'd do absolutely anything and there's no physical feat that I couldn't accomplish but in reality, I couldn't even jump over a little fence, a little gate, to get to him in time. And the reality, if it had been the other side, he'd have been in the road. 
but because it was the other, it was the, you know, he climbed onto the other side of the road, uh, the other side of the fence, and my glasses were on the floor, couldn't see anything anyway, it was black outside because the lights were turned off. I kind of found him through hearing. I could kind of hear and saw a little bit of movement and I got him, but he wasn't interested in me. He was so excited to just be free and to go exploring. He had no interest in what I was doing. The fact that I was laying on my back, I was still injured. I injured myself. I didn't realise until... It was one of those moments where I thought, well, not at the time, but afterwards I thought, I'm going to feel that in the morning. You know, it's you know, it's like when you put a pizza, cold pizza in the fridge, I'm going to eat that in the morning. It's like, I'm going to feel that in the morning. And I was surprised because I did hurt my lower back a little bit. That didn't surprise me. But I think that was more to do with the jumping over the fence and stuff what I was surprised is the left side of my neck has been painful for the last few days and it's like wow what on earth is that about it's it still hurts but it's less now so I guess that must have been the way I landed or who knows who knows what did that it's, I think that's a problem. I think what it is, is my body is so perfectly aligned that anything that um, pushes it out of whack causes a little bit of problems. It's like I've got the perfect machine that's going or, you know, so that's, I think that's perhaps what it was. Have a little drink. So I've nearly wasted the first hour, which is nice because it's important. So just remember, Twitter is at Jason Newland. Facebook is uh, Jace, it's uh, Jason Newland Hypnosis, and my email address Jason Newland at hotmail.co.uk. They're the three places you can get hold of me, contact me send me a message and I will share your message with the other people that are also listening yeah you know what I'd really like to do I would like to have music I'm saying like like it's like it's like some kind of amazing idea that no one's ever thought about wow you mean play music as well as talk wow you mean like a radio station wow yeah I do mean that I just think it'd be so cool to be able to play some songs because I'm quite eclectic and I I like songs from all, I'm now going to explain to you what eclectic means, but I really do appreciate songs from all eras, you know, even like jazz, the blues, you know, just, I'm not a massive fan of any particular um, genre, maybe pop. But I've gone through phases where I've loved country and western. And then there's those singers that have become bigger than the type of music they were playing. You know, someone like Garth Brooks, he was the biggest uh, performing artist in the world. And it wasn't because of country and western, so it was because of him, because of what he did he was so great and 
yeah, I love him. Sorry, I do. I've really, really loved listening to his songs uh, in the 90s. And another one would be... Uh, let's have a look. So Johnny Cash, what would he be classed as? Apart from dead. I mean, what, what would he be classed as? The style of music that he sings... It was kind of country and western, wasn't it? But again, it was sort of his own style. Um, yeah, brilliant, brilliant um, artist. And as a young lad, I, you know, I used to. There was a lot of crossover artists. Uh, I suppose Dolly Parton was one of the of the big ones that I remember. Um, and there's a couple of things I remember about her is the because she was in that film 9 to 5 wasn't she and but she also had the songs because I remember seeing her play um, yeah I remember seeing her in the charts like 9 to 5 what are we to make a living and um, Jolene, 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 I'm big enough, please don't take my man. I mean, come on, Dolly. Ain't no one gonna take your man. I think it's, I think if any human being could feel safe that their husband or wife is not going to cheat on them I think Dolly Parton would be one of those you know Elvis Presley you know it's, they're kind of you ain't going to get another Elvis anywhere else you're not going to get another Dolly anywhere else that's got nothing to do with the hair I find it weird Dolly she kind of shrunk over the years she's got shorter still haven't seen that um, Burt Reynolds film now the last one he did uh, the one he did before he left forever it was quite weird you know what I find it strange is being at the age that I am I told someone the other day how old I was there's this uh, what is it she sells the big issue she's homeless kind of she sells the big issue and she says to me how old are you so I've kind of got to know her over the last month or so just been trying to help her out a little bit bit of getting her a bit of food and stuff and whatever and how old are you? I said, for the first time, actually, I was a little bit embarrassed to say my age. Normally, I don't care. Normally, I do not care. I tell everyone my age. I've, people don't even want to know. You know, it's, it's for some reason, this, this situation, I was a bit embarrassed. You know, I've had people say to me, look, I don't care how old you are, I'm trying to do an operation here. Please remove him. You know, it's like, but I'm 48. I'm 48, you know, I'll be 49 this year. In August. 49. But when she asked me my age, I said, uh, how... And I did that thing that is ridiculous that I kind of don't think anyone should ever ask because no one ever wants to answer it. And if anyone asks me, I always answer ridiculously. You know, but I, I did, I did it. Cliche, I said, How old do you think I am? And she said, 37. 38 or whatever something like that 
I said, no, I'm 48. Nah, I win. And I thought, oh, oh, she thinks I was younger. The thing is, when I, anyone says that to me, I said, oh, how old do you think I am? I say to them, even if they look, you know, 30 or 25, I say, 73, 94. And I say, oh, be serious. Don't, come on, just tell me how, you, how old you really think I am. I said, 74, that's what I said. Did you not hear me? So I don't like to play those games, but yet I played the game myself. And I don't know why. I was embarrassed. Embarrassed to just be what I am. An old man. <laughs> getting on a little, getting on a little bit. She said, how come you look so much younger? And I said, because I'm lazy. Very, very lazy. Lazy people look younger than they really are. I don't even know if I do look younger than I am. It's hard to tell, isn't it? How can, who, who's, who's to judge these things? You know, I, I think I look all right, all things considered. <laughs> whatever that means I, d I don't look old old but then what is old anymore who knows who knows what old is by the way if you're listening to this when it's not live you're still welcome to leave messages and I will uh, comment I will if they're if they're worthy of my attention, I shall read the messages and the comments and the you know stuff out next time I'm live. So you know you may be listening to this at ten o'clock in the morning, and I might be as well. I will be asleep hopefully at that particular time. And you may think, oh, I want to leave a comment. Ooh, he keeps saying his email address is jasonnewland at hotmail.co.uk. I want to send an email. Ooh, is E Twix is Twitter, Twit Twitter, Twit Twit Twitter is at Jason Newland. Ooh, I shall leave him a message. Maybe I'll even follow him. I follow him on Twitter. Twitter. I can't say Twitter without tweeting. Twitter. Twitter. Oh well. Sorry about that. You can leave messages. You can. Uh, wow. Ah. That's interesting. I've got a message here. Uh, ah. The message here from someone saying, I am a Christian who likes the simplicity of life. I'm not interested in porn, racism, far foul language, or disparaging remarks about my faith. I'm guessing a full stop was needed there. Keep your thoughts to yourself. It's not really what Twitter's for, is it? People do sort of like to share their thoughts, otherwise Twitter wouldn't exist, but anyway. What I share isn't always my views, but sometimes share things that may offend. I apologise in advance. That's interesting. That's kind of a weird. I'm not interested. I don't want to be offended, but I might send put post things that might offend others. And put in porn together with 
a group of things like racism, foul language, disparaging remarks. Or well, forget foul language, but, you know, porn and racism, it's not. I don't see how they would fit into the same categorization. There you go. That was, uh, was, this is one of my messages that was sent to me. I don't think it was sent to me personally. Portillo, I wonder what that's about. Portillo. Ah. Auntie Gertie from number 30. So, this is a Brexit free zone, by the way. So, you can come here and enjoy the quiet ness of not hearing about politics at all no politics no Donald Trump no Desmond Putin Tutu or Theresa May or Hitler or uh, I don't know any other political figures they're all Gone. They're not in. Not part of this period of time. We're in a a time free zone. This is the place where none of that crap happens or is important. It's all gone. It's gone away. Bye bye. You can just relax. So we're into the second hour of let me bore you to sleep so if you're not bored by now you should really be bored by now because boredom is the name of the game because the good thing about being bored is it allows you to just switch off your mind and no longer need or even care about paying attention to anything at all. Anything at all. Nothing needs your attention. Nothing requires you to think or feel anything about anything. And just as I said that, the fridge freezer came to a standstill it sort of started you know when it, they come on and off like jean and yeah. but it sounded like it was oh, it might be the saucepan that's on top of the freezer and maybe it rattled slightly maybe that's what it was that would make sense been thinking about doing uh, I've got this tablet I've been thinking about doing some artwork and uh, I don't know I might the thing is I, I went onto this art app where you basically it, it kind of shows you what to do and then you just copy it and I did it and it looked really really rubbish oh god you know oh, this is totally true I can't believe I'm telling you this but um, <laughs> this is 100% true my friend showed me a picture I went around his house and showed me a picture and I said oh did your did your three year old draw that or you know paint that picture I didn't say you did your three year old but his son was three years old so I said did your son you know but for the sake of the tape because otherwise how would you know he was three so yeah so did your did your three year old do that and he said no it was me and I 
I started laughing. And it was one of those situations. It's one of those situations where I knew it was wrong. I don't always know when things are wrong, and I sometimes do wonder where my uh, moral compass is at times. But I, it hides from me sometimes the moral compass. So where is it today? Oh, I'm going to have to go through the whole day without a moral compass. Okay, I'll do my best. The more I started thinking about it, the funnier it became. And it wasn't funny. I wasn't laughing at his picture anymore. I was just laughing at what I had said and how it was probably the worst, you know, the only way it could have been worse is if I'd have said, if he'd have shown a picture and I'd have said, oh, what a pile of crap. And he said, oh, that was my son do that. That was my three-year-old son, you know. Then that would have been worse, or worse would have been if, if he'd have showed it to me. And I just grabbed it off him and just started wiping my ass with it. And he said, that was my son. You know, obviously I wouldn't do that and that would not something that anyone would do, is it? But I'm just saying it to, to make it worse. I mean, you know, this. If I set fire to it and just chucked it into his house, burning the house down, that would have been worse, obviously. You know. But. I just. I found it funny that I'd said that. that I'd said to him oh just assuming that it was his boy it was his three year old that drew it and painted it and it wasn't and I knew that it was wrong I knew that it was wrong to laugh but I couldn't stop it was just And I don't even know how much of the laughter was external compared to internal. It was like trying to hold a fart in during a prostate exam, you know? It was just... It was... You know what? It's like, this is going to be difficult. Yet surprising for the doctor at some point. Oh, I don't, uh, I'm I'm giving you all the good stuff today. I I had this friend, <laughs> I had this friend, and uh, yeah, I'll tell you. Okay, I had a friend, and he basically he was on morphine for pain, like he had a back back serious, you know, back problems. So he had to do on morphine, which had clogged him up, uh, you know, and he went to the doctors for that reason. He said, like, I, you know, I haven't, I haven't been to the toilet for like 10 days or something. I need help with this because it's painful and it's causing me problems because of the morphine. It's, it's sort of, you know, uh, it can do that sometimes. And the doctor said, oh, now I wasn't there, so I don't know if the doctor did actually say, oh, and whether he did look over his glasses, but this, I, my version of the story was given to me by the person that was the star of the story. And, okay, so... Anyway, my friend said, please doctor, I need some medication, I need help with this uh, because, you know, it's worrying me and I've been constipated for, you know, 10 days or something. And the doctor was looking at his notes and he said, hmm, again, I don't know if he did say, hmm, I'm not even sure if 
my friend told the story in the same way that I'm telling it. But I think sometimes the mannerisms get left out of stories because people do make noises, don't they? Like, mm, ah, ah, mm. Not always those sounds, but there are sounds. It's like, <sighs> you know, different, different sounds. Uh, in the same way as there are looks, there are glances, there are different ways to, you know, visually say visually look at somebody but there must be another word visually glare visually exploit no that's not a right word visually something anyway so so my friend he said doctor please I've been on the pills for 10 days I haven't had a bowel movement for 10 days. I need a bit of help. Please, won't you help me? And the doctor said, well, mm, mm, mm. he said, I have noticed something, sir. I've noticed that you're in your early 50s and you have yet to have a prostate exam. Yes, I have not had a prostate exam per se, but I don't think today is the correct time for such an investigation. Well, I think we should give you a prostate exam. As I said, doctor, I don't want a prostate exam. I haven't done poo-poos <laughs> for, for 10 days solid. Excuse the pun, solid, get me? Hmm? Solid, solid, not, not, anyway. Solid as in nothing coming out. Yes, well. Yes, but sir, you need a prostate exam. It's very, very important. So my friend, he said, I don't think it's a good idea to give me a prostate exam. I don't think it's a very good idea to do that. But the doctor insisted. So, here's what happens next. So my friend, takes his trousers down, <laughs> um, puts a, I don't know if they put a robe on him or whatever, but he's bent over the chair, or no, bent over the table, and the doctor's got his gloves on, um, sweating a bit, I imagine. And, uh, yeah, there's the excitement in the room, you know. <laughs> and uh, who's going to make the first move? You know, it's a, what, you know, it, you know, just, you just you never know, really know what's going to happen, dear, in these situa <laughs> these situations. Will the love last forever? Who knows? Uh, Will it be compatible? So um, anyway, the doctor does, the th you know, he goes to do the prostate exam. And he, boy, he, he, he accomplished two things in one. Uh, he got the prostate exam sorted out and he also sorted out the constipation at the same time. And according to my friend, also redecorated the office. 
that's according to my friend. I don't know, gives a horrible visual, but you know, it may be what he meant by that is he bought some painting and he was painting the, um, the walls uh, yellow or green or brown or whatever, whatever color they uh, he chose. A bit unprofessional whilst having his hand inside someone's bum but yeah so and that's a true story that, that's that's like oh the thing is though it's good to know isn't it just for future reference that you know if you do if you manage to oh anyway no I won't go any further I remember we were at the dinner table a couple of years ago and I was at my dad saying, you know, you have to have a prostate exam because two of my uncles have had issues with the prostate. And my dad said, I will, I will. I said, well, you need to do it because, you know, it affects me because if you have it and I'll have to have mine checked as well. I want to make sure that you're okay. And he said, oh, okay. And his wife said, what's that then? He said, oh, the prostate. She said, oh, that's just, is that down the, <laughs> it's, uh, then I have to go down your throat to check that. <laughs> true, true, true conversation. And my dad said, no, it's somewhere else. Oh, where is it then? Oh, by the way, can you pass pass the potatoes, please, love? Yeah. Uh, it's like, oh, it's, this is not a dinner conversation. Mind you, he spent 20 years talking about his piles while we were at the dinner table. That was fine. Bloody hemorrhoids dripping. But that's okay. Why are you eating? It's all right, we can talk about that. So let's see if I've got any other questions or anything. Na na na. When I fall in love, it will be for about an hour. Right, so Linda, you live in Buffalo. Buffalo. Never been to Buffalo, but then I've never been to many places. I like the sound of Buffalo. I'll tell you what I like about the sound of Buffalo is this. Let me tell you. It's something about see because I'm, I'm from England and I'm sure that if you're from other countries and you've never been to England, you've got an idea of what it's like, which will possibly be very, very far from what it's like. Just like my idea of what it's like in America will be very different to what it's like in America. You know, it's, uh, it just won't be, it's, it can't be the same. But I have, I've got this little, romantic view of the sm not smaller places but like outside of the uh, the cities where there's diners you know the diners which are in all, all the well not all of them in loads of American films uh, and TV shows the diners where people go and you know, the police car sort of outside there, and maybe there's a, um, a petrol station next door, and you go in and you get. 
boy with myself. You can get pancakes and coffee and, you know, different um, breakfasts, I suppose. I don't know. But I love the idea of that. I'm, I'm not even joking. I mean, I love the idea of living somewhere where there's diners where I can just go into a diner and get my dinner and never cook and just always just get my food from wherever I go into. The only problem is that in so many of the films the people start shooting up diners and you know robbing them and stuff and I, I don't really want that. So that's that's the downside to, to down diners, I think. Because in this is like endless movies where they're I don't know why. Just leave the diners alone. I like diners. And what's the other thing? Um, motels. So we don't really have motels here. We do, but kind of not the way that you have them. And I like that. I like the idea of living in a motel. Maybe not forever, but just staying in a motel that you know you really don't want to know the history of the room. It's, you know, please don't tell me what's happened here. Yeah, please, never. I just want to just, you know, and that's... For me, that would just be exciting. And to go there and to like travel. Is it Route 66? Because um, I don't drive, so for me, I quite like the idea of traveling through America on, is it the Groundhog? Groundhog bus? Groundhouse bus? Groundhog bus? Ground. Grinder, grinder bus, ground, ground, groundhog, groon, 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 crowny, ground. I don't know. This isn't there a famous bus, Greyhound, Greyhound, the Greyhound buses. I don't know if they're still available, if they're still around, if they still work, if they still exist, if they, I don't know. But I like the idea of that, travelling and then just stopping and then staying in a place and maybe spending a year just travelling across America or three months, depending on how long the the visa that I have lasts, you know. I think that would be groovy. It'd be really groovy. <laughs> I've just got um, Linda tell me Greyhound bus. It's a bloody Greyhound bus. So I did think of it. I did find it eventually in, within my head. Within my head it was there. I knew it was there somewhere. But I wasn't sure where it was. Until it popped out. But I was close wasn't I? I think I lost my way a little bit with Grinder. But oh. <sighs> oh. it's so good that I'm not getting paid for this because it means I can yawn. That's a good thing about doing stuff for free. You can't get sacked. You can't get. That's why I like to do voluntary work, or I used to is because with voluntary work as soon as someone starts to get shirty and starts to try and tell you what to do you just laugh at them it's like <laughs> see ya but it's your job no you get paid for jobs this is volunteering that's what you're volunteering to do. What to be spoken to by a knobhead 
No, I'm not. But that's what you're here for. No. Bye. I've been quite lucky with most of my voluntary positions that I've had. But I actually volunteered at this... It was the elderly place. It was for... It's basically for pensioners, for old age citizens or whatever you want to call them, elderly people to meet up in uh, society, you know, outside of their homes or outside of their uh, residential care places. It was a really good place. They had a a proper fitted out kitchen. They cooked meals every day. It was open five days a week you know weekdays and people could come along they had to become members and there was low you know quite a few tables for people to sit out to eat drink coffee and then they also had chairs you know like a like an old people's home part you know Uh, and it was nice However, there's always a little however coming, however, the volunteers didn't really get on very well with each other. Yep, you heard me right. I thought, what? How, what? I just, that seemed very strange to me. There was people there that were volunteering that refused to talk to each other. I mean, literally blanked each other, would not. And sometimes it literally would get into rows or they'd be talking about each other. And I left because I didn't like it. Didn't I can't be around that kind of situation. It's like, wow, it's a volunteer. This is a voluntary thing. You think people would be? I don't know. I don't I don't try not to have too many high expectations for humans but just for what it was I'd have thought there'd have been a bit more uh, kindness maybe maybe just a little bit just you know a little bit kindness just a little bit maybe I thought it'd be yeah very very surprised very surprised so I left didn't do that for long they've moved now so they've clearly lost that building and now they're somewhere else part of another charity just another cost cutting adventure I'm guessing but again I'm guessing because guessing I find guessing is easier than finding out facts, really. Ah, here's a good story for you. This is from a while back. This man went into... I just... um, This is kind of an adult story, but, you know, there's no expletives or any graphic content... So this man, he went into a brothel or massage parlour and he got into an argument with one of the ladies and she pushed pushed him out of the window. But there was a, a like a veranda. She didn't push him off the thing, but he ended up locked out of the window on this little veranda, kind of connected to the roof. And there was a picture of <laughs> there was a picture of him in the papers, and he was naked, completely naked, and the. It was a busy shopping street. 
and it was a fire engine that had to come along and get him get him down <laughs> and I think the headlines was he something about an unhappy ending so it's was, it was quite a funny headline it's like wow you know there's there's embarrassment and there's embarrassment and that's that's up there with I imagine if what happened to me with the school and Andre and me jumping over the fence and landing on my back if that had happened during the daytime while but then it wouldn't I suppose because the, the gates open at daytime so I'd have got through it but yeah that would have been embarrassing if there'd been people around to see yeah so Linda what time is it where you are in Buffalo New York New York, New York. I always think of New York as being this probably a bit like London, but like one road. That's going to be bigger, but it, it won't. I don't know because London we've got what about ten, ten million people plus probably in London and we've got cities in our country uh, I don't know how many now because uh, they keep kind of growing turning uh, things into cities 9.41pm you're right near Ni Niagara Falls I thought that was in Canada Wow. The only thing I really know about Niag Niagara Falls is uh, Superman. He saved that kid, didn't he, from falling down there. And also it froze over, I think, last year. Or earlier this year. Well, I didn't know it was like close to New York. what else was oh yeah I was saying something oh damn I hate it when I'm saying something really interesting and I forget oh wait a minute that never happens oh there are two there are two I'm ten minutes from the border of Canada How can you be in New York and be 10 minutes from the border of Canada? You're winding me up now. Let's, there's two Ni Niagara Falls. There's not two, there's only one, isn't there? You're winding me up. There's two Golden Gate Bridges as well, yeah? Two Tower Pizzas. Oh, I don't know about that. There are two. How can there be two? Why? Why are there two? Doesn't make sense. Well, boys and girls are about to learn something. No, it's just one. Okay, it says it. You can buy tickets. What is it, like a concert? Niagara Falls is the collective name for three waterfalls that straddle, st 
straddle the international border between the Canadian province of Ontario and the US state of New York. They form the southern end of the Niagara George. Um, ah. So actually there's three waterfalls. Right, from largest to smallest, three waterfalls are the Horseshoe Falls. That's the, from largest, okay. The American Falls and the Bridal Veil Falls. The Horseshoe Falls lies on the border of the United States and Canada with American Falls entirely on the United States side separated by Goatee Island. The small Bridal Veil Falls are also on the United States side, separated from the American Falls by Luna Island. Located on the Niagara River, which drains Lake Erie into Lake Ontario. The combined falls form the highest flow rate of any waterfall in North America that has a vertical drop of more than 50 meters, 160 foot. During peak daytime tourist hours, more than 168,000 M3, in brackets, 6 million cubic feet of water goes over the crest of the falls every minute. They could be making it up. Who, who could know? Who would know? Who questions these things? Completely making it up. They could be, couldn't they? Horseshoe Falls is the most powerful waterfall in North America as measured by flow rate. The falls are 27 kilometers, 17 miles, north northwest of Buffalo, New York, and 121 kilometers. 75 miles south southwest of Toronto between the twin cities of Niagara Falls Ontario and Niagara Falls New York Ni Niagara Falls was formed when glaciers receded at the end of the Wisconsin glaciation, the last ice age. Why don't you just say that then? And water from the newly formed Great Lakes carved a path through the Niagara Escarpment en route to the Atlantic Ocean. Niagara Falls is famed both for its beauty and as a valuable source of hydroelectric power, balancing recreational, commercial and industrial uses has been a challenge for the stewards of the falls since the 19th century. So there's three drops. Right. Andre. And. Oh. Oh, I noticed how I, I'm. As I'm reading it out, you're filling in information about it. Uh, hey, you notice that? 
Linda's written American Falls and Horseshoe Falls. Yeah, but I just told you that. You're just copying me. You're copying me. I just spent the last hour reading it. I've researched this. Andre, you're doing a poo. Well, that's nice. All that paper on the floor and he chooses to do a poo on the carpet. <sighs> I'm not happy about that. Had I known that he was... Uh, oh. Now he's just looking at me like, yeah, so? What are you going to do? What are you going to do about it? Nothing. Nothing as usual, nothing. If I choose to do a poo on the carpet, that is what I will do. There's nothing you can do about it at all. He's very cheeky. He really is. He's a long monkey. Ah. <sighs> Yes, there was a story there somewhere. I forget what I was, what my point was, but I don't think I've, I've seen. I have seen waterfalls because when I was a kid, uh, probably. 11, 12, 10, whatever. Me, my family, used to travel up to Wales camping. Um, which is why I would never go camping again. But I'm not really, I like to call it tenting, but I suppose if it was with the right person, I probably could go camping, you know, some kind of adventure or something like that. But I would prefer to be in a camper van, you know, sort of to travel and then just sleep in the back of the van, you know, if it's all nicely done. Not like necessarily like a big Winnebago. Is it Winnebago? Those big massive uh, American trucks that are just like houses on wheels. I mean, that would be no good in England because our roads are too small. It'd be okay on a motorway, but not on, you know, our Honestly, we've got little roads, very tiny. We've actually got miniature cars here. You don't realise it until you visit. But the cars are miniature. You actually have to sit on the lap of the person you're with. So the cars, when you see people driving, in the movies, they don't show it. But in reality, you'll actually be on the lap of the person while they're driving because the cars are so small. And when people get out of their cars, they fold the car up and put it into their pocket. <laughs> That's the truth, that is the truth. See, there's a lot of differences between English people and Americans. You know, we're fed uh, these non-truths about how life really is in other countries and which is fine because you know it probably makes it more interesting when we actually do go there you know when you first come to England it's probably a bit of a shock to realise that wait a minute where's Mary Poppins why aren't all the kid, kids running around 
sweeping chimneys, you know, it rarely happens anymore. You know, it's, we're not living in, in the Dick, Dick, Dick Keynesian, I couldn't even say the word, considering it starts with Dick, I thought I'd be right with that, Dickensian era. But, 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 I quite like that era. I quite like, and I wouldn't because, you know, if I was alive in that time, I would be probably a pickpocket or a prostitute or, you know, I'd, based on my life experiences and how uh, rubbish I've done in, you know, prosperity times, I'm not sure how well I'd have done in, in difficult times. Yeah, I think I'd have, uh, yeah, I think it would have been problematic. I probably would have been a, a highway robber or something. Or maybe just picking up the dog, not the dog poo, the horse poo, and selling it to farmers for milk. I don't know, I'm just making that bit up. But then we, we're fed stuff about America and the idea that everyone's carrying a gun. And what else? Everybody's attractive. You know, every, everyone's slim. All the men are muscular. All the women, uh, you know, perfectly proportioned and slim. You know, that's the, the media, that's the, the TV shows and the films kind of portray. Yeah, in our hearts, we know that's not true for any of us. I mean, I'm lucky that I have a perfect body. And yeah, it's, it's just genetics that I have just perfect looks and you know everything like that is I was just very fortunate to be perfect in every way but not everybody is not everybody can be and I think it's about showing some compassion especially for the perfect ones like me uh, to show <laughs> to show compassion and love to other people that aren't absolutely amazing like I am so it's it's this one. Oh god, I can't believe some of the crap I come out with. I come out with some proper rubbish sometimes. Still can't believe he just done a big massive poo on the carpet. Why am I surprised by that? If you could see this place, I mean, it is a mess and it needs tied in and it needs, you know, some stuff done. But there's paper laid on the floor for him to do his bits on. It's not ideal, but, you know, it's all I've got. And he still does it on the carpet. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I wonder why I, I, I wonder why, 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 why she went away. Oh, I got a ukulele. And I was thinking of playing it during the show <laughs> and then I thought well I need to learn some chords first because I know no chords at all I mean I'm talking at all not not like 
Well, you, that's not a few. No, nothing. And not even one? No. Well, not, not just one, not even one. No, stop asking. I, I really don't. I don't know any courts. And it's because I don't care. And that's, that's the problem. Because I, I didn't spend a lot of money on it, like 60 quid or something. It wasn't a lot of money. But the reason I got it is because I wanted to maybe, you know, start a new hobby, do something different. But, but, and here's a good quest, this is a good but, is when I got it at home, I realized that I had zero interest in the ukulele. In fact, I looked on the floor, a pair of boxer shorts that has got holes in it. And basically it needs to be chucked out. And I felt as much interest for those boxer shorts as I did for the ukulele. That was where my limit of interest was. It was just, really? Just, uh, you know, just, uh. it's a ukulele. And it's a shame because I think, I believe, really do believe yes I really believe I think I could be quite good at making up some silly songs some proper silly ones and have some fun you know have some fun along the way you know what I mean but I don't know I really don't know I'm going to have a look on the bipolar support group it's always good for a laugh. Let's have a look. <laughs> it's not good for a laugh. That sounds terrible. I don't, I don't, I didn't mean that. It's, <laughs> I go on there, it's, but it's very, it's very rarely funny, to be fair. Uh, it's kind of weird because with the bipolar group and it's probably the same on a lot of bipolar support groups is people post stuff like um, let me think of an example uh, da -da 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 -da. let's have a look Okay, here's an example. Do you find that um, having bipolar causes you to uh, want to eat Cadbury's cream eggs? during Easter time. You know, just, it's, you know, it's like, do you find that you get thirsty sometimes? It's like, you know, just like some of the things that are like so human things, we all have that. I don't think it's necessarily connected to uh, mental illness. Another thing that bugs me, <laughs> I'm gonna go on now. It's not mental health. If someone's ill, they haven't got mental health. Mental illness, it's not mental health. Yeah, I've got mental health. I'm off work with mental health. No, you're not. 
off work with mental illness. It's an illness.